Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm here for another video, another collection overview. This is a kind of video that I, I've not been doing for a while, but I thought, why not? Because, mostly because I received the, the Lamy original, Lamy Safari original Terror Red, I decided it could be fun to have a video about pens with that terra or coral color. First, how can I explain this color? It is not very easy. It is, some people call it more like an orange, but I don't think it's really an orange. I would say that terra is a kind of color that reminds us a little piece of a vase, and I will leave it here, just for kind of a little reference, and you'll see that many colors will not match this at all, and there is also another color that I don't think is the terra, which is the red. You may ask, how do you tell apart red from the terra from real red? I, I don't, I don't really have a definition and not good at colors, but I will show you how I decided to do this. Let me put this one there. And this is a Caveco uh, Classic Sport Red. So I would define this as red, regular red, real bright regular red. So the you can see it has it's really really different. Some of the pens that I'm going to show you are called coral or terra or other stuff and some have a little different color but I would say they are not these kind of red. So let me start showing them to you and I will start by those three that are a little bit off. And first one. It's one of the first pens that I bought. It was the first pen from Pilot that I bought. And I bought it because it reminded me the Parker Dufold Big Red color. And I, it's really a model that I like. And for me, a fountain pen shape is the shape of the Parker Centennial Dufold. So this one has this nice number five Pilot, uh, Pilot number 5 nib, made of steel. It is a fine, but it is very good. It is a cartridge converter pen. And this one is a little bit more on the red side. Let me put the reference here, so you can see it's more like a bright red, but it's not the kind of real red. I know that the screens and stuff will make colors different, but I can't fight that too much. Another pen that I really like, that I bought in the same store here in Lisbon, where I bought this one, the store it still exists, but it's not the same people that are there and they don't sell many stuff now. So, this is a Waterman Karen Coral. And this is a color that was not that common at the time when I got it. I remember I had to make a pre-order of the pen because I saw it. And by that time I didn't see it online because there was not much information online. But when I went to a pen store there was those leaflets, uh, kind of a little catalog or informative leaflet from uh, Waterman and I saw this color and I said I need to have that but why do I like red? No, but this is not really red. This is what they call coral and Waterman Karen is a very nice pen. It has a gold nib as you may see there an 18 karat gold nib this kind of inlaid nib which is very beautiful. It has a very very nice design it is also a cartridge converter pen. And let's go to for the third pen that I say it's not the same 
the, the exact same color as the others. If the others are the exact same color, but that's another thing. So, I have here the, an interesting pen. This is the Monte Grappa. Monte Grappa. And when they started, they had this kind of logo. I don't know if it's when they started, but many time ago they had this Monte and then the Mountain and then Grappa separated. So this is the Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa in Coral or Coral Red. I'm not sure how it is named. I have a review for that. I will leave links below if you want to search for the pens or to search for the reviews for ones I made. And this is an interesting pen from Monte Grappa. I received it free from them for review. It has a steel nib, an interesting, it's a good nib. It is an interesting pen and it has this kind of piston filler with this sound. Let me put next to the microphone. This has this ratchet sound and this is the way you feel the pen. It has one, one thing that I really, really, really like in piston filler pens is that when you move down the piston, this doesn't come out or this doesn't separate from the barrel. It's always in the same place. And I really like that on the turning knob. Um, and it is an interesting pen. It doesn't have an ink window, but that's how it is made. It is a very nice pen. I really like it. Some people don't. Some people hate this kind of uh, cap ring, but I like the pen. And this one you can see is a little bit more on the magenta side, but I don't think it is that much as we can see on camera. Let's see. But let's come again to the little vase and the bright red, and I would say this red is different from the others. It is more similar to this one, but it is different. And now, Let's go for the ones that I would call more the fox, <laughs> not fox, sorry. <laughs> I, I say that because I will, I'm looking at a, a Kavec fox, but um, I wanted to say terror. Okay, the next pen that I have is this one. This is something that I bought once from a seller here in Portugal. Uh, it was on my early days of pen collecting, or not pen collecting, but pen buying for myself. I had some pens that people gave to me, and I had this one. This is a pen that I don't know, and I bought this one, I don't know why, I never used it, I think. And I don't, know, I don't really know anything about it. It was restored by the owner, so it has a new sack. It is a, um, a lever filler. And the brand is called Empire, or at least that's what's written on the, it's not focusing well, on the clip. So, I don't know this brand, I don't know anything about it. It has these black lines there, black lines on the bottom, a lever with no special engraving, so no engraving on the barrel. I don't know anything about the pen. I just know it is an Empire pen. That's how I call it. It has the black uh, section and you have this warranted number 3 14 carat I cannot focus this properly 14 karat gold nib made with this heart shaped breather hole made in USA. So, if you have some information about that, please let me know because I'm interested to know something. Maybe I will not keep this pen, maybe I will sell it, but I would like to know more about it. Now, the next pen that will join this collection is the Caveco Art Sport Coral which is a very beautiful color. It has some depth, not a lot, but it has a beautiful color. This is from the Art Sport collection, which are the ones made of resin instead of the regular ABS plastic. It has a black 
thing on the top. I th I'm not sure if it should have the black nib or not, but that's something that we can buy separately and then it has the it is a cartridge converter pen. And I think that this color looks like a vintage one. The next let me get some extra room so I can show you all the pens. I'm not really collecting this kind of color, but sometimes stuff happens and I get them. The other one is this. This is the Caveco Skyline Sport Fox. That's why I told Fox some moments ago. And it is this pen. It is the normal Skyline Sport, which means it has silver trim. It is made of ABS plastic, cartridge, converter pen, short pocket pen. And this is a regular edition and I would say that the color also goes into this color family. So we are talking about quite recent pens, except for this one, which is a vintage. Then we go for a recent pen again and we have this thing. And this is the Jinhao Centennial or Jinhao 100 and it has a number 6 Jinhao nib. It has the same kind of color and the same kind of um, Parker dual fold design. Only the clip is different and then it has this medallion but the color of the medallion doesn't go with the color of the clip. So it is an interesting pen with this color and with the same color then they made this one that they called the Jinhao, one, uh, Jinhao Centennial or Jinhao 100 and they called it Century there in this engraving on the barrel. It is the same pen as the previous one but all with chrome trim. It has a uh, a steel nib and these I was checking because this pen has ink inside yes um, it is a cartridge converter pen also and this one tries to really emulate the Parker Centennial du Fold which has the, that big red version that has this kind of engraving there on the barrel this is a, an interesting color I I think I, I enjoy this pen. So let me put this one here. And now we go to the Lamy Safari Original Terra Red. It has a matte finish, which is not present in any other of these pens. It has this matte finish. It is an interesting pen with a steel black nib. It is the special edition for 2021 of the Lamy Safari along with the, uh, the original Savannah Green. So they made two pens that they, they, are, they have the same color as the original Lamy Safari from 1980. And now, sorry for the little interruption, but I need again to make some room for some other pens to join because this video has 15 pens with this color as I was telling you I do not collect this color specifically but sometimes they are so nice and I can't resist I have one of those that I really wanted to have for a long time and it is the Graf von Faber Castell Intuition Terra it has the Graf von Faber-Castell logo there, so focus, the Graf von Faber-Castell logo there. It is a beautiful pen, it's not very big. It, it has this turning knob, but this knob is just to unscrew the section and take the... to, to, to refill the, the pen with a cartridge or a converter. And it has to be done there because they decided in the design not to make a section. So the perfect way to hold the pen is there. It has a little curve. It is very comfortable to hold the pen there. But you would not have 
room to unscrew the section, so you unscrew the section from behind. This one has a gold Graphon Faber Castell fine nib, and it is quite a good pen. I was after one of these for a long time, and I recently could acquire it, so I'm really happy with that. Uh, please pay attention be because of the all this COVID thing. Sometimes I forget that recently may have been two years ago, but my notion of time is not very accurate right now. Now, we will go back to vintage, but before let me just put the red Caveco, and this is the real red. You see that Montegrappi is the one that is more magenta, here in the screen they look almost the same, but in real life they are not. This one is real red, this one has a more pinkish magenta tone. Now, let's go for the vintage, as I was telling you. And the first one that I have is this thing, which is very interesting. This is a small pen. Let me try to show you the engraving. There it is. This is a... Where is that? It is a Parker and it is a Lady Dufold. So this is a small pen and it was a pen intended for ladies. Has a pen that didn't need a clip because there would be no shirt pocket and so it would have a ring there but the ring is lost now and you could uh, put it in a, in a ribbon or something like that. This is an interesting pen, it has a wide band. The band is a little bit loose, so it comes out. I will put some shellac there, maybe, just to keep it in place. And this is a Parker, this is a flat top version. So it is a small pen with a quite small Parker nib a gold nib and the breather hole in this pen in this nib looks very very big mostly because the nib is very small so the, you can see the pen is small and this is a button filler pen this is a pen that I never used I don't think it has a sack and the nib is quite stiff some people think oh that's a vintage pen so it has a flex nib. No, no, no. Not all pens had flex nibs and most Parkers were well known for having stiff nibs. Then we have another pen which is a Parker Dufold again but this is a Junior Dufold. Let me show you here if I can. Dufold JR, so this is the Dufold Junior, the same kind of imprint, but this one is not a ladies version, so what happens is the pen has the same length, it has a, a slightly different color, has the same length, a different cap band, this one has a big one, this one has just one wide band, but not coming to the, till the, the lip of the, of the cap, and this is kind of four or five times wider and this one has a clip of course if you wanted this pen without a clip you just need to unscrew the top and to remove the clip this pen is in great shape even the black parts but it is also a button filler i don't think it has a the bar inside but this pen has okay let me show you the nib also a parker do fold nib but it has a little problem which is a piece of the cap broken there the cap lip I have the piece so this is a project for some time I can glue it in but Maybe this is a pen I will not keep and I have to decide to decide if I will keep the pen or I'll fix it or maybe I will sell it as it is and maybe the new owner may buy 
the may may fix the pen as he wants instead of me doing stuff with the pen. The next pen is also another Parker will fold. The engraving on this one is a little different. It doesn't have that lucky curve banner. And it is really a girthier and bigger version of the Junior. So this is the Senior. It is a big sized pen. If you ask me, this is really my opinion, if you ask me how if you ask me to draw a fountain pen or to say how a fountain pen should look like, it's this. This is the perfect design for a pen for me. It is in quite good shape. It has this beautiful nib, the Christmas tree feed. It is in very good shape. So this is a really nice pen with a broader band there. And this will come here. Now, let me just do something. Just for playing a little bit with the pens, let me align them by the section. And here, we rotate this one a little bit. Here, you can see the lady, the junior, and the senior. These are the sizes of the nibs. So, quite different from each other. Let me put these down again carefully because all these are vintage pens from the 1920s and I have another Parker Centennial Dufold sorry, not a Centennial Dufold, another Senior Dufold, that's what I meant which is this one, the biggest difference, this one has a much better engraving on the barrel. And this is in very, very nice shape also, but this one has two bands on the cap. Two thinner bands, but it is the same size, it is the same pen. These were bought in a store here in Lisbon that sold old pens, no longer exist also. And this pen has an interesting thing that I believe, I don't have proofs of that, but that's my belief, that the nib, this nib, okay, if, uh, before of that, uh, this nib is, um, is a nib for, is the vacu vacuumatic style nib. My, and these nibs were not made for the Parker Dufolds because for the Parker Lufold was the Lufold nib, but later, when Parker discontinued the Lufold, they needed to keep the warranty services to the old pens. And as far as I read, when someone sent one of these pens for repair because of a bent nib or something like that, and no older nibs, no dofold nibs were available anymore, they made these very big vacuumatic style nibs with the arrow there to fit this pen. So, this is, as I was saying, this is my opinion, but it is an opinion, not a fact. I believe that this pen was sent for repair to Parker and this is a original factory uh, replacement nib. So, not sure, that's just my opinion. So, it is fun to have a pen with the nib that is not supposed to have, but it is actually correct if it is a replacement. I'm not sure. I will believe that and <laughs> that's what I think. And so, these are all one, two, three, four, they are button fillers. So we have quite variety here. We have cartridge fillers, lever filler, button filler, piston filler, so not bad. And we will end up with a new pen, with a modern pen that is still in 
production by Parker, which is the Parker Centennial Dual Fold Classic Big Red Vintage. I think that's the name. It's a very confusing name. It has these uh, chrome trim, the wide band, and it has this kind of engraving to remind us of the old ones that says the fold, Parker pen, and so on. And it has the new nib. Oops, I made something wrong there. Sorry, <laughs> it has no nib. Uh, the, this was a fail, but I will not record this again. Just because I had the nib, I, ha I had the pen cleaned and I had the nib drying there. Uh, so it didn't have the, the nib installed, but now it's fixed. So we have here the nib, it has this kind of ace of spades design. It is a very interesting pen and they decided to make this pen to honor the older one just with a modern clip instead of the vintage type of clip. And I think that the color is not exactly the same, but it matches quite well. But you can see that the Parker Senior Default is just a little bit bigger. And just to end up this video, let me just show you. This is the Jin Hao Centennial and the Parker Centennial. This one even has the similar engraving on the barrel, as you see. So these are interesting pens and we this has the logo of one brand, the other logo of the other brand, but that's normal. The engravings, the bands are the same, are very similar, but one says Jin Hao, other says Parker, and uh, they have different uh, cartridge systems, and they have different nibs, of course, one is made of gold, the other one is made of steel. However, Jin Hao is now made making gold nibs also. And what we can say is that, and the parts are not interchangeable, if you think that they are both produced in the same factory, but one is marked Parker, the other one is marked Jin Hao, it's not that. And both have the, the this one is kind of an inspiration in the older one and the Jin Hao is really inspired by this one. So if you ask me is this a copy of the Parker Centennial Go Fold, yes it is. Uh, up until to the very small details of the of the engraving. But some people and this is a discussion I don't want to go too too deeply today, but I want to talk about it. But some people say though but Maybe they are, there are some copyright things going on. And I would say, I, I don't believe so. I'm not an expert in copywriting, but I don't believe so. Because, is this a copy of that one? Yes, really, it is a copy. It's not a fake, it is a copy. But this pen is not original. Also, this one is kind of inspired on the vintage and it's easy to see that this pen is inspired in this one. This one is around 100 years old now, so there are no copyrights going. So if this one says, okay, and this pen is inspired in that one, and this one may be inspired in that one, maybe even this one is loosely inspired in that one, okay. People are free to feel inspired by an older one. So I don't really think that if you say this one is an homage to that, you cannot say that this one is a copy of this one and not an in this one is an inspiration in the older one. Okay, then there are the ethics of it, not the legal things if, if, a, if a brand should do that kind of stuff. That's another thing. Uh, I really, and I think there are other stuff to talk about about that. If you ask me, I'm quite happy to have the Jin Hao Centennials because sometimes I go on holidays and I spend a weekend in the countryside or something like that and I like to bring with me fountain pens and it's nice to have a pen with a size and shape that I really like and it has a, it provides a very good writing experience but risking to lose around 15 euros instead of 
losing 500. So for me, it makes sense. And believe me that when I buy these Jin Hao Centennials, I also have some original Parker Blue Fool. So I think there is room for everything, but I will talk about that. I didn't want to discuss this here. This was just an overview for viewing the color. Finally, you have here the red, the real red, and the real terracotta color, more like this. So all are a little bit darker than that one, but this is it. This is my collection of pens with terracotta or coral color. And when I talk about coral, it's kind of the coral red. There are some coral pinkishes and oranges, not that, not those. I'm talking about just the coral red. And these are my pens for that sub collection. So I hope you enjoyed this collection overview, and I hope to meet you here on the channel soon. Bye.